Well, welcome guys. My name's Scott Barmstead. I'm the General Manager of Operations here at Fitness Australia. Um, we're going to take this evening to break down the Queensland COVID safe plan. Uh, so any, any questions that you may have, uh, if you just type them directly into the, the, uh, the, the chat section, and then as I suppose I progress through at the end, we'll try and cover off as many of those questions as we possibly can. Um, there's really three main documents that we're going to focus on uh, tonight. The first one being the Queensland Roadmap, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, so just while I'm sharing these documents, it might be best if you try and uh, maximise your video so you can sort of see what I'm referencing. So currently we're in stage two, okay, where we can have gatherings of 20 people in gyms, health clubs and yoga studios with an asterisk beside it. So we've got a couple of options when we turn it, when we talk about returning to Queensland um, facilities, reopening. Note that these have the asterisks here, which talk about more people with a approved COVID safe plan. Now, we're gonna go through the COVID safe plan in a fair bit of detail and try and answer any questions that you actually may have. But it's really critical that we get this off the bat straight away where we say, if you're happy just with 20 people in your facility or in your entire venue at one time, you're okay to run those 20 without going into great detail into the COVID safe plan. The only stipulation to that is the things like the hygiene, the social distancing of one person per four square meters, um, the removal of certain facilities like saunas, change rooms, things like that all still stand. But if your business is functional with 20 people, these 20 can be a rolling 20. So what that means is if you have a open gym environment, um, say you have 15 people training and four turn up, they can join. Um, as soon as you get to that 20 cap though, you can no longer take any additional people and they have to start leaving as you start to replenish them. It's really, really critical that if you're not abiding by the COVID safe plan and you're rolling this group of 20 through, the 20 people are inclusive of staff that are present. So if you have a gym manager, a receptionist, and maybe at some stage, you know, two cleaning staff, so you have four additional people in that venue, then you can only have 16 participants utilizing the gym floor at that stage. All right. Now, let's say we're in a situation where just about all businesses are interested in having more than 20 in their venue. That's where we have the Queensland COVID safe plan for the fitness industry. Now, this is directly available on the Fitness Australia website, as well as the Queensland Return to Play website, which has been endorsed by the Queensland Health Department. So we're gonna spend most of our time going through this one. Um, this is heavily focused on stage two, okay? So stage two, I suppose, is a interim period. So we'll just jump back over here. Okay, with stage three potentially rolling through at the 10th of July with up to 100 people. Now, need to really, really highlight this, this top where there is, this is under constant review. Um, and should the fitness industry perform well, you know, have high standards, abide by the industry COVID plan, we're fairly confident that we will roll through into stage three. Should the industry not respond well to this and potentially, you know, um, break regulations, break sanctions, there is a real possibility that this will not take place at this date or, you know, the fitness industry will be pushed back to a further date. So it's absolutely critical when we're going through the COVID safe plan that we're completely understanding what needs to take place. Okay, so the first page is a bit of a preamble. Now, the way that this document has been created is it talks about, I suppose, all fitness services facilities and then the subsequent questions that come down or the subsequent uh, areas underneath that will talk about specific types of facilities. So if that is a, you know, a PT studio versus a big box gym versus a unsupervised gym, there's, there's gonna be additional requirements that take place. Now, when we talk about hygiene, there is going to have to be a significant increase in cleaning 
uh, from not only your staff members, but also your patrons and gym members that take place. Now, the stock standard is the Safe Work Australia, which is a direct link there. Um, it is a fairly heavy doc with lots of information in there. If you're looking, I suppose, for the abbreviated version on the Fitness Australia website, there is a operational guide that breaks down specifically for the fitness industry on what is the best practice for cleaning of equipment by members as well as staff. But this is what you must be compliant with in terms of hygiene. For gym members and patrons, there's also an onus on them in order to maintain hygiene. So at the front of your gym, there's going to have to be a hand washing station station or an alcohol based hand sanitizer. So just as they come in, make sure they can squirt, they can wipe their hands, clean them. This is really, really important. Disinfecting wipe downs of exercise equipment before and after use. So this was really heavily highlighted by the Queensland Health Department where they wanted to make sure that every person that touched a common area would clean it themselves for their own confidence, but then also clean it post use for the next person coming in. Each, each patron bring a clean towel as they attend their session or class. Um, encourage bringing extra towels. So these might be for, you know, wiping down um, your, your face, things like that when you're sweating. Um, encouragement of bringing an extra towel to lay down on top of things like benches, things like that. Obviously there's safety risks, safety risks that come along with this. So if we're talking about, you know, someone uh, using a barbell bench press and the towel sliding underneath them. So common sense applies in that situation, as well as this is the next big one, uh, require them to bring their own drink bottles. Okay, so what we want to disencourage is people sharing water fountains or water bubblers where they're put in their face and spittle saliva on a metal surface that may be transferred to another person. All right, uh, we want to encourage as much contactless payment as possible. So obviously that's referring to cash. Um, so we know that cash will can transmit uh, COVID. So encouraging, um, you know, paying on your phone, paying by card, whatever it may be. Should uh, people be using cash, especially your staff, obviously hand sanitizer needs to be present in order for them to, to disinfect their hands post using that. Providing adequate supply of disinfectant wipes or disinfecting solutions for the actual gym members on the gym floor in order to actually clean the equipment. So it's all well and good to have all these signs, uh, but there's obviously going to have to be a significant increase in the amount of availability of, of cleaning materials. So you need to make sure that at all stages throughout hours of operation, this is easy accessible for all gym members as well as staff in order to actually clean. We're going to touch on bins and whether we need specific requirements in a, in a few slides. But also, as we were saying, the hydration stations uh, is what we want to avoid. So any, any part of the gym where there's people putting things near their face, such as a water fountain that's squirting water into their mouths, we want to limit and try and remove. In this case, we need to close these hydration stations. Waste management. Okay, uh, now look, I think our industry is fairly uh, across this already. Obviously, we're talking about wipes that have potentially been in contact with COVID or another communicable disease. So what that requires is a bin with a bin bag inserted in it. We place the materials into the bin. We then seal the bin, the bin bag, and then dispose of that. Now, we've consulted with multiple waste management companies that come and collect uh, garbage bins. Uh, they have flagged with us that there's no need to um, you know, classify it as medical waste or potential contaminated waste. It is just normal waste. But we would encourage you just to make sure that that is okay with your waste management supplier. Obviously, for a lot of businesses or for the whole industry, actually, this is somewhat unknown. So what we would encourage is that, you know, the things that work, we continue them. The things that aren't working so well, you know, there's a constant review and ongoing upskilling. 
you know, the, the one thing that is critical for the fitness industry to return is going to be a consumer confidence. Um, so as a consumer enters the gym, they need to see that the equipment's being clean. You know, the door handles are constantly being disinfected. Um, so this constant improvement or this continual improvement is really, really critical to go forward. For studios, um, group fitness, indoor and outdoor, okay. The big one is these sessions are normally back to back. We need to make sure there's sufficient time in between for actual proper cleaning of the equipment, okay. We're gonna go into a bit more detail of this one later, but the critical one is any shared equipment should be limited within a session. Uh, but as a minimum, clean in between use of patrons. So what that is referencing is, you know, where we have maybe a partner workout where someone's using a medicine ball, doing a medicine ball slam. My partner picks it up, does a medicine ball slam. That's no longer the case during stage two because we need to ensure that they're being cleaned in between uses. So it may require, or it will require actually, some reprogramming and some restructuring of how those classes operate. So it's not ruling out shared equipment, it just needs to be cleaned in between those individuals that touch it. Okay, so in practice example, you know, this is what the Chief Health Officer was re really seeking as we were putting this, this COVID plan together. So, you know, we have something along the lines of, you know, if we have a piece of equipment that's used six times per hour, if we're talking about, um, you know, maybe a, a preacher curl machine, um, six times per hour, 60 uses over a 10 hour period. Under these guidelines, we have 60 uses, which equates to 131 times that piece of equipment being cleaned. So that is pre and post. Um, member using it, that's also staff coming around at minimum once an hour, wiping it down, as well as what we'd refer to as a thorough clean by the gym, either upon opening or upon closing. It's really important that we also, I suppose, keep a, a risk um, management process in place that identifies hazards. So obviously we're gonna have significantly um, more abundance to chemicals within these facilities. So what the Queensland government will also be looking for is how we're actually tracking these risks and how we're mitigating these risks. Okay, so most businesses will do this on a regular basis. We just need to keep in the forefront of our minds that these processes have now changed. So these will need to be updated to reflect it. Okay, just have a diagram there, I suppose, of the high touch points of where would we actually focus in our cleaning on, uh, as well as any type of you know diagram that a member may need to be directed to in order to what to clean pre and post using that equipment. As you can imagine, uh, with gyms reopening nationally, there's going to be a demand for cleaning equipment. Um, now is 100% the right time to be making ensure that you have a consistent supply of these cleaning cleaning supplies. Um, cannot stress that one enough. Should, should you run out, um, it's going to be the case where we're going to have to reduce operation in order to actually maintain the right amount of hygiene for the operational component. All right, this, the social distancing. Now, this is a really, really important part of this document. This is where we move from having a cap of 20 per venue, including staff, into having what is actually an uncapped amount of people within a facility, depending on the space of your facility. So what this is, we can now break our facilities up into areas. So we can have area A, B and C. Each area can have no more than 20 people per area, but they must be spaced out or you must measure that space by one person per seven square meters. So what that means is if you have a 70 square meter area A, there's 10 people that can operate in there. If you have 140 square meters, you can have up to 20. And you should use that calculation to basically map out the gym. Okay, so if you have an obscure, part of the gym that's, you know, um, an obscure amount, you just use that calculation to see how many people can actually fit into there. 
it's really important that these 20 individuals that are booking into area A, whether that be, you know, a free weights area or it might be a cardio area or you may reshuffle your gym so you have weights and cardio in one area, then a functional training area, whatever it may be, these 20 must book in and they cannot co-mingle. So what that means is if I book into area A, which is the weights area, I can't do my half an hour weights and then walk over to the cardio area, which is area B, and then co-mingle with that group. This is what the Queensland government is going to look at when they come and assess your gym. Now, to put that in perspective, over the weekend, okay, so from Friday to Monday noon, um, I've been contacted by now nine gyms where they've had police as well as representatives from can their local councils turn up in order to actually conduct an audit of their gym to make sure that this plan is in place and they're actually following it. So it's really, really important that these individuals book into these areas. Once they've finished their workout, they leave. Okay. Now, when we're breaking these areas up, okay, fortunately, uh, the Queensland government have done something appropriate. And what we're talking here is not a permanent wall. It could be a bollard that has you know, emergency tape through it, uh, the cafe barriers that you see next to cafe stands, um, a temporary wall. So it's not something that's going to physically prevent someone from walking through. It is literally to mark out that area. So you just can't have someone say, okay, I'm just going to go from my area A to my area B to pick up this set of 15 kilo dumbbells and I'm going to walk, walk back into my area A to work out. That's what we need to eliminate completely. Once again, cannot make it more clear, these areas are capped at 20 per area. Now, while there's no co-mingling, let's say you have area A booked in, uh, you have had 20 people say that they're going to turn up at 8 a.m., on a Monday morning to train and only 16 of those people turn up. If you have four people walking past the gym to say, can I actually jump into area A? I've noticed you're short. Absolutely. They can join and they just form that group of 20. But at let's say 9am when that session ends, that's when they leave the facility. Okay. We can't have, you know, them stay for an extra 15 minutes into the next group that's starting they need to be kept in their individual groups. During stage three, okay, the Queensland government that they will, I suppose, review this down to what may potentially be a one person per four square meters. And then that obviously ties back into what stage three of the rollback would be in the government roadmap, which may just sort of make these areas somewhat redundant, but this is a non conversation and it's been made abundantly clear three. Okay, uh, for, gym, for the gym floor, okay, so we're talking about open gym floor here, um, as well as change rooms, which we'll, which we'll touch on. Um, you need to understand, or your staff as well, need to understand exactly how many people allowed in each area. Okay, they ideally need to book in. Okay, so that is ideally online, so you don't have, you know, 50 people turn up at 9am saying, I want to, I want to work out. They can, they have a booking system where they can turn up, know they're guaranteed a spot in area A, B, C, whatever it may be, or the group class that's going on. Critical, okay, that you understand that social distancing. So this is where the 1.5 metre comes back into play. Now, although up here we're using the calculation to measure one person per seven square metres for the actual outline of the area, when they're in those areas working out, they just need to maintain their standard social distancing. Okay, so that's at minimum 1.5 metres apart. Now, what the initial feedback from the businesses that are already down this track is people won't congregate in one specific area anyway. They will generally disperse relatively evenly out through this open gym space. There's ideas in order to, I suppose, you know, remind people, encourage people to science on the wall. 
staff wearing badges, staff w walking around, discussing. Um, they're all, what we need to get into, I suppose, the industry's mind is that we need to educate our members on how we need them to behave in these areas. I should also note, as I'm mentioning staff, if you are abiding by this plan here, staff are excluded from those 20 people caps. Okay, so where they're in included, if you're not using this plan, abiding by this plan excludes them from the total caps. So that might mean you can have personal trainers operating in these spaces, you can have gym staff, you can have cleaning staff all operating in these spaces that aren't contributing to that group of 20. Really important that we eliminate areas of congregation. So if you have a reception area where there's a couch where people may catch up for a coffee post-workout, we just need to remove those or put a witch's hats on there or put some tape on there to say, this is no longer available. This will be available at a later date. Um, once you, you know, we take the AIS approach where you get in, you work out, you leave. We want to, prevent people from actually congregating. Okay. When we're actually talking about a physical layer of the, of the equipment now, we need to abide by social distancing. So if we have treadmills lined up, we need them 1.5 metres apart at minimum. If you're in a situation where you can't have these treadmills greater than 1.5 metres apart, the way we could do is just restrict every second access to it. So, you know, you'd have four treadmills, treadmill two, treadmill four aren't in use. Okay. And they could be alternated. Um, so there's cleaning in between and then we reactivate the other one. The thing you need to be wary of is that if we are pulling around staff, uh, pulling around equipment and you have things like emergency evacuation plans that have been mapped out, they may, to, they may to be reflected to say, okay, now the evacuation route has changed um, or the assembly area has changed because there's now equipment in that area. Okay, uh, we're popular, fixed equipment. So what I'm thinking about here is something like a lap pull down seated row combination where they're actually physically attached to each other and they're in close proximity. Both may be popular in your gym um, and you obviously cannot pull them apart. Plus you're gonna have members want to use these if they're booked into a specific area. So instead of just ruling one out, what you can do is have a sign that's placed on there that says, okay, as the lap pull down is being utilized, the seated row cannot be utilized. Once the lap pull down has been finished, that person can then utilize the seated row. So that keeps, I suppose, all the popular equipment in play and it also prevents, you know, significant restructuring of these gyms in order to get through. Okay, this is the other big one right here. Okay, so during stage two, showers, change rooms, facilities must remain closed. Okay, so the only reason a individual will be going into a change room is to utilize the toilet. So toil toilets are available, change rooms, showers are closed for stage two. All right, uh, for studios, group fitness classes. So if you run classes within uh, your facility or potentially you're operating, you know, what may be like an F45, a BFT, a Barry's boot camp, something like that, that is a purpose-built group fitness type business. We need to allow for cleaning that takes place within those. So everything else before this still applies in terms of the sharing of the equipment and the hygiene, but what, we're suggesting here is we're allowing at minimum 10 minutes in between classes to obviously reset the equipment, wipe down the equipment and make sure that the business owner or the operator is confident that there's been enough time to clean, set up as well as allow the existing class to leave and not have a crossover in the door or in the um, area where you store your bags, whatever it may be, for that for those groups of 20 to overlap and spend time together. That's what we're really looking for here is just removing these groups of 20 and not having that, that co-mingling. 
once again, the same thing, signage should be on all the doors, uh, all the walls, you know, encouraging people and reminding the people to, to spend as far apart as they possibly can. <clears throat> okay, um, PT. So if we have PTs that are operating within these areas, or if you're running uh, maybe, you know, a smaller 24 seven club um, and you have PTs on the floor, social distancing still applies to personal training. So there's going to have to be in stage two, a rethinking of their programming. Um, and we need to avoid things where we have personal trainers going heavy, close proximity spotting to the individuals, as well as things like, you know, um, fitness assessments where they're making skin to skin contact that needs to be limited during this, during this time period. Okay. Once again, adequate spacing, um, you know, physical touching during the training. So things like uh, boxing pad work, sparring, those types of really high contact um, exercises, especially where they're breathing face to face are off the table, you know, so it's about coming up with alternatives. So instead of doing, uh, you know, boxing pad work, maybe just use a, a boxing bag or a speed bag. You know, there's, there's ways that I suppose we can work around this. Received a lot of questions, Fitness Australia, around unsupervised. So the Queensland government cannot be any more direct than what they've been over the last week that unsupervised facilities must not operate during stage two. So I've had a few questions around, you know, well, I've got CCTV. Um, there'll be someone monitoring the CCTV that can alert a security guard to come in and take people apart. That's just a hard no from the Queensland government, okay? The definition needs to be someone present on site to ensure that social distancing, hygiene, etc., can take place, okay? Now, this is under review for stage three, which keep in mind stage three is only a couple of weeks away, but this one right here has been a hard no from the Queensland government. All right, staff gathering training okay obviously we're just this is a lot of common sense so if you don't need to have face-to-face -face stuff gatherings if you can utilize um you know zoom skype microsoft teams that is the preferred option for critical staff training so it might be you know you're inducting your staff in the new cleaning regime or you're inducting staff on how to sanitize whatever it may be they take place but it is under social distancing with the minimum of 1.5 meters apart um, ideally in adequate ventilation if held indoors so we don't want to put these people into small windowless rooms we want them in bigger rooms where there's more airflow in order to prevent potential potential transmission okay um, this is an example okay of breaking down every second piece of equipment and removing them. All right, common sense would state that, you know, non-essential visits to the workplace should be canceled or postponed. Um, if we're talking about things like uh, deliveries coming in, you know, how we can restructure those to prevent, you know, physical contact and especially um, having them interact with those groups of 20 that take place. So once again, anyone that's coming into the facility should be having hand sanitizer available or washing their hands, um, you know, encouraging contact as delivery. So it might be if you are having, um, you know, new gym equipment delivered, is it okay if they take a photo on their phone and send it to you that it's sitting in your, in your garage, in your warehouse out the back, or do you actually physically need to be there to see them, see them unload? Okay. Tracking of participants. Now, this one is absolutely critical, okay? This is one of the reasons why the fitness industry COVID plan was the first COVID plan accepted within Queensland. We need to be able to provide at immediate notice a list of everyone that's been in the facility and the time that they arrived. So if we are talking about either option of not using the COVID safe plan and as having in that rolling group of 20 including staff you still need to be able to say person A turned up to this facility at 9 15 a.m they were here for roughly 
45 minutes doing a workout. Here is the other list of people that would have been in contact with them. All right. This one becomes really, really easy if you're using this booking, booking system where you have multiple groups of 20 because they're all booking in prior. This uh, attendance record needs to be everyone that sets foot within the facility. So staff, contractors, cleaners, you know, equipment repair people, um, all encompassing. It's absolutely critical that you keep it for a minimum of 56 days. Okay, so this is a health regulation. Obviously, any visitor details, if you know people are coming back, reactivating their membership contracts, it's the ideal time to make sure that we have their correct mobile number, email address, etc. All right, so touch wood, this doesn't happen, but what happens when we have either a suspected case of COVID or at or worse, a confirmed case of COVID. It needs to be a plan threat as for yourself, potentially as an owner. If you have any symptoms that is associated with COVID, whether it be you know, headache, cough, runny nose, generally feeling unwell, stay at home. Okay, do not come into the club. All right, once again, the really critical thing that takes place is we need to train every single staff member that, take, that sets foot within the facility needs to be across this policy. They also need to know what to do operationally for all aspects of, the, of, this, of this plan here. Okay, now, this is for members, once again, there'd be a sign that sits right bang on the front door that says, if you're feeling unwell, turn around, head home or off to a doctor. If, okay, you have a confirmed case of COVID in the facility, what must happen immediately is you would contact Queensland Health. The facility closes immediately and then what's known as a deep clean will take place on the facility, which is outlined by the health authorities within Queensland, okay? You flip that around, okay? Because, you know, you're not gonna have someone that's diagnosed in your gym that's gonna come from a healthcare professional. A healthcare professional has a duty of care to automatically alert the health authorities that their patient's been diagnosed with COVID. They will then go back and and contact trace and then it'll come up that the individual with COVID has been training at this gym. The health authorities will contact you immediately and say, we need to close the gym and we need to undertake a deep clean. This is how this deep clean takes place as well as these are potentially some of the contractors that can provide deep cleaning. Okay, once again, Queensland Health need to be aware of this. They will also ask for the contact logs to take place, okay? So keeping in mind that we need to keep that information for a minimum of 56 days. All right, this is, this is the other big one, okay? So managing the flow of people within a facility. So if we have, in an ideal situation, we have one entry point, one exit point that are not the same. Now, a lot of venues will have one entry point, exit point. So as you see at a lot of uh, supermarkets or shops, they'll split that entry point and they'll have signs or a bollard in the middle that says, you know, basically keep to the left. This is the entry. This is the exit. Once again, what's trying to be mitigated here is people being somewhat chaotic and walking into each other or trying to sidestep each other where they just basically have stick to the left, walk through, on my way out, I'm sticking to my left and I'm not stopping to talk to people, I'm moving directly through it. Okay, bit of a diagram of a gym in Queensland that's broken down the areas. Okay, as you can see, they have one entry exit, but they have clear markings, which may be markings on the floor. These might be bollards placed, you know, every three, four, five meters apart to say, stick on your left, don't cross over, okay? Ideally, if we have multiple doors within sort of this area here, which may be a, a group X room, we have one entry point, 
one exit point. So as these people are, are coming in, coming out, they're not, they're not crossing over. Okay, instructional signage should be placed on all entry exit points of each individual room. Okay, so that might seem onerous, but if we're talking about segregating these rooms or these areas off with something like a bollard or a low fence, it could just be something simple as printing off an A4 bit of paper, laminating it saying, keep to the left, or this is area A, do not enter unless you're booked into area A. Really important to note that if you are a Fitness Australia business member, okay, you can log into your dashboard, you can complete a COVID operational guide, which then unlocks a large array of this type of instructional material. Okay, so I'd encourage everyone to do it. You can then also have access to branding, which you can then turn around and put on things like doors, entry points to say that you are meeting or you've gone through a checklist and you're across everything that's required in order to operate, you know, in a COVID safety environment, um, which once again ties back into that consumer confidence. All right, you also are going to need a condition or a policy for individuals that are COVID positive, have been diagnosed with, with COVID. Now, you know, common sense would state that if a person's been diagnosed with COVID, they're there'll be treatment, there'll also be a quarantine period that takes place. Now, if someone comes, if a member comes and says, look, I've been diagnosed with, with COVID, um, you need to make sure that they've served their quarantine period, which may result in them suspending or having a block on their entry card. So there needs to be a policy in place for you to turn around and say, well, you've identified that you've been um, diagnosed with COVID or I've been contacted by a health authority that you have COVID, you cannot enter this facility. The reality is I think most people in Australia now are not going to do something like that. They will quarantine, um, but you never know and there needs to be a policy or procedure that's in place there. Okay, once again, um, we want to reduce peak times and I suppose people congregating. Once again, though, if you are following this plan, you can have as many groups of 20, depending on the space of your facility that takes place. But I would ask you to keep in mind that, you know, things like people waiting out front for the session to start or hanging around to see their friend they haven't seen in, you know, three months to train, whatever it may be, um, we need to try and limit that interaction to take place. All right, now this is, this is a big one. We've also been receiving a lot of questions around uh, childcare and creche. Now, this is the fitness industry COVID safe plan. Um, there are about another six that have been approved and there's more and more being approved within Queensland as we, as we move forward. So, you know, if you're running, let's say a leisure center that has open gym floor, you may have an indoor pool, an outdoor pool, as well as a creche there'll be interaction and crossover from these COVID safe plans. So what needs to take place there is whatever area is most relevant, that is the plan that takes precedence. So if we're talking about the gym aspect of a leisure centre, this COVID safe plan is the one that's applied. As you read through this plan, there's nothing in here that references an aquatic environment. So the aquatic environment COVID safe plan would take precedence there. For things like reception, they will both reference it, but they will both be very, very similar as the Queensland Health Department have, have covered off and have very, very specific guidelines for things like that. Okay, once again, administration, um, we want to limit the amount of crossover for your staff. So your staff have the access to the same hygiene materials as you'd expect for your gym members. So that's hand sanitizer. Once again, trying to limit the amount of cash that you're taking. Obviously there's segments of the industry that utilize cash, that's fine. Um, but we just need to have some mitigating um, contaminant procedures in place. Once again, showers, change rooms remain closed. Okay, only toilets can be available. All right. Um, Fitness Australia is here to help, um, especially if you're a, or even if you're not a member 
number at this current stage. Uh, we, we have reach out, have a ask any questions you may want at uh, for Fitness Australia. The CST and the customer service team have been upskilled in this document and how I suppose it's applied in just about every situation. So feel free to call, email, um, or even post on social media if you think it's a more of a generic question that a lot of people will get out of, get something out of, throw it there. Uh, Safe Work Australia is also very, very good in terms of, you know, uh, cleaning hygienes as well as how to manage staff during during this period which the managing staff is absolutely critical as well. So the thing that, or I suppose the feedback that we've had from the multiple sites that have been um, audited by the police or local council has been, it's great that you're abiding by this document, but are the staff trained? So, you know, you can have all the process procedures in place, but if your staff don't know how to execute or how to respond to a situation, it's no good, okay? So we need to make sure that the training of staff goes right through, that everyone's working, as well as we have our, our staff's best interests at mind. So if they are feeling stressed, do we have procedures in place in order to help assist them through this period? Okay, training. Um, we would encourage that every single individual that works for your gym does the government uh, COVID safe training, how to, how to minimise them, um, as well as, you know, there's things like TAFE Queensland, which have some great information on there as well. Okay. Last part is, I suppose, how this document came apart. Okay. So obviously Fitness Australia had access to it. We had industry consultation Plus, we're talking largely based on. It was also signed off by some occupational environmental physicians um, through Safe Work itself. The next couple of steps, okay, so we have the type of service here, which is your group training, your supervised gyms. We have our stage one, oh, sorry, our stage two, stage three. This is the outline of where we currently sit, okay. All things going well, we have basically the advice is we need to see how we go in stage two in order for the Queensland Health to change their directive for stage three, okay? So we are currently in discussions with Queensland Health and the Queensland Sport Department around what is unsupervised and bringing them in, as well as supervised gym and maybe reducing the booking sessions and having a larger cap, okay? But the absolutely critical thing, which I've said a few times, is that it's going to be up to the industry on how they respond. So should we have great compliance with this type of uh, framework, we're going to move to stage three fairly quickly with the possibility of stage three being brought forward. Um, should there be and sanctions hangers reviewing industries and if we have, you know, within cafes, restaurants, there's been, you know, 15 breaches within cinemas, there's two, and then we have fitness, it's 65 breaches. That's going to push the entire industry back and make the stage three restrictions not as easy as we all would like them to be. Okay. The last thing I'm going to touch on before we, before I start going through some of these questions is this is a statement of compliance. Now this is available on the Queensland government website as well as the Fitness Australia website. So far every gym where a police or local council has presented, they've asked to see this statement of compliance. Now it's not a very full on, it's literally just saying that your business is COVID safe, you're agreeing to these, you sign, you date, uh, um, you don't, I think I you to display it. This comes asking. Um, I'm just going to jump into some questions. So if you have any questions at all, guys, now's the time to to start writing them and we'll see how we go. Okay. Um, Adrian, can staff move between areas? Yes, they can. So those staff are not included as in those 20 caps. So that'd be there in order to... Um, ensure social distancing, ensure cleaning. The 
other thing which I should note is it's, you know, he, the general public of the general public. So we're not expecting security guards to be in area A preventing people from going to area B, okay? Should that take place and something goes wrong, um, you just need to be able to prove that you've done everything in your power in order to actually have those individuals stay within their areas. So you've got appropriate signing, they're aware that they need to stay in area A, but sometimes people are just gonna be people and they're going to walk across, okay? Um, once again, uh, Jody, I think I've answered that question. To clean, as long as you're following this plan, then you're excluded. Okay, um, with entry and exit, this is from Anonymous. With entry and exit, oh man, sorry, Maddie, I've just dropped that one. Does this have to take into account co-interaction between groups? Yes, it absolutely does. And I suppose that's why this, this framework references, um, you know, like a 10 minute changeover period, especially for group classes. So, the one thing we just want to avoid is two groups of 20, you know, trying to leave at the same time, trying to funnel through an injury, a single exit point, and then potentially talking out the front of your facility. So if we can stagger them, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it could just be something simple as, you know, two, three minutes. Um, group A, head out, staff start cleaning. Group B, follow them out, and then they disperse out into the open air. Infrared, uh, infrared saunas, are they still able to operate as they are not wet? Um, that just comes down to the fact that it's a really closed, inclo um, warm. For stage two, it's a no, okay? But once again, for stage three, there's, there's a possibility these will be back on. Okay. Uh, do you think they will allow 24-7 in stage H3. Look, I would like to think that there's a real opportunity, but once again, it's going to come down to how the industry responds during stage two. So if we have, um, you know, 24 hour unstaffed facilities that decide to operate during stage two unstaffed, that will jeopardize basically 24 sevens for stage three. It's going to come down to how the industry responds on this one. Uh, Dave Martin, air conditioning allowed or natural airflow? Uh, both are okay. Um, we want to get some air moving, but ideally it is, you know, your fresh air that's moving, being moved out of a window, okay? The one thing we sort of want to avoid is a, you know, direct fan on someone running on a treadmill that's blowing hard, that's blowing that air directly out into an open gym floor, okay? But in terms of this COVID plan, there's nothing specifically that says, you know, airflow needs to be um, restricted. It just needs to be, you know, a real sort of common sense type approach. Okay. Uh, uh, Glenn Hansen, in regard to cleaning with barbells and harsher curling cleaning case, dangerous due to slipping. What is the suggestion here? Uh, we installed sanitized station with each part facilities, barbell, okay. So what we're talking about here is barbells that have, I suppose, rough grips, okay, in terms of actually keeping them, you know, dry or non-slippery. I still think that they need to be basically cleaned, Glenn. Um, so hand sanitizer is there. Now hand sanitizer is obviously dries fairly quickly. So it may be that if you do have some aggressive grip bars that you have a look around what else we can actually use in, in terms of cleaning for those that maybe something that evaporates a lot quicker that necessarily doesn't need to either be wiped off or leaves, leaves a slippery residue that takes place. Uh, just touching on the co-mingling, so members can't warm up in a cardio room, for instance, and then go do the weights in a separate weights room. No. So not in that sense of having, um, you know, maybe multiple groups of 20 warming up together and then splitting. Um, there is, a, I suppose, an option if you have a, a cardio room or a specific warm-up room where you can book groups in in smaller time blocks you know i've been using an hour as an example but there is an opportunity to have you know a, a 10 minute block for a warm-up that you can spread out or you know have much smaller areas we can book multiple groups in okay. uh, what can be used to separate areas 
look, anything that is around that sort of 1.2 metre tall, so we can talk bollards uh, that have, you know, like the emergency tape in between them. It's just something so, you know, myself as a gym member knows I can't cross this barrier. Um, we don't need anything like sneeze guards. We don't need any building walls or anything like that. It's just something to keep them separated so they can understand. Okay, uh, did you say crèche was okay uh, if run just for group fitness, i.e. yoga studio? So with the crèche um, and childcare, we've gone back to the Queensland Health in order to either A, have a industry plan developed for what would be child minding uh, or, or crèche, or we make an amendment to the fitness industry plan so that actually covers off those childcare. So, I'll take that question on notice and I will come back with either an answer um, that the fitness industry one's been amended or here is the solution for the, for the child mining. Okay, where clients move continuously through operation hours uh, is cleaning equipment after each round by client staff compliant to this framework. Yes, it would be. Um, now the assumption would be that that is supervised in that time. Now it might be that depending on that size of the studio, you may be in that cap of 20 that takes place. Okay, so um, we're not doing multiple groups of 20 in this one. We just have a 20 per venue that are moving through, doing the working out, um, but you would still be requiring those individuals to actually clean the equipment pre, pre and post. Um, okay, Joe, as this COVID plan is new to many of us, I'm sure we feel concerned that we have to do everything in our power to comply to this COVID safe plan. Uh, but interesting, do not reason we're not complying. Uh, it's more unplanned risk. What has been the direction in regards to police health inspectors, how they deal with this? Will it be a warning, fine, closure, uh, will a common sense apply? Now, it's a good question, Joe. Um, I'm not across what the sanctions will be, but so far the feedback that I've had from the business owners that I've spoke to, um, and not every business owner in Queensland calls me when they when the police turn up. Um, I don't want to say they've been casual, but they have more been around, show us the COVID safe plan, show us this, um, this statement of compliance that's here. You know, we want to do a head count. We want to see what your cleaning regime's like. So it is not, you know, be looking for people that are clearly flouting the rules, okay? Once again, from Fitness Australia standpoint, you know, should you be doing everything you possibly can, you, you've put as much mitigating processes in place as you possibly can, we will always make that argument on your behalf as well. So, you know, if a police turns up, they go in, they see someone walk from area A to area B, but there's clearly signs everywhere. There's a sign on the door saying, stick to your allotted area, do not cross these barriers. You know, that's, that's not going to result in a fine. I wouldn't think anyway. Okay, uh, can we use freestanding boxing bags during group personal training sessions with one bag? Yes, uh, with distance applied. Yeah. So freestanding, what we've got to avoid is holding pads and having people punch basically and then breathe face to face. Uh, our class is specifically for arms. Okay, uh, can we have PT one 30 minute session and then a second 30 minute session within an hour? So you have 20 people, including the PT's clients. The first one leaves, the second one comes in as you still have 20 per time, but 21 people have been in contact during that period. Yep, yeah, okay, so that that's a, that's a wordy question, if I understand this. So if you're saying that you're using the Queensland roadmap where you're only having 20 people per venue, then as long as you only have 20 people per venue, the movement of those people isn't so important. What needs to take place though, is if you're having more than 20, so you're breaking them down into areas, you can't have people come and leave in those 20 areas. So the way that you may get around that is instead of having you know 20 people in a personal training area, they're broken down into smaller sections. So, you know, there doesn't need to be groups of 20. 
you know, you could cut that area up into, so you only have, you know, three or four people per area, but they're fenced off with the PT specific equipment that you need for that session. And those areas, depending if you're a PT studio, can be, can be mobile. So, you know, you, you train one person, then person B comes in with a completely different set of goals. They're now operating in a different area or we reshuffle those bollards around to fence something out. Uh, Julie, uh, will indoor pool be under the fitness industry award, whereas used for aqua, free swimming and rehab? That will be under the aquatic award. Now we are reaching out to those guys for things like, you know, um, your aquatic fitness instruction sessions to see, make sure that it is covered off. The one thing that all these plans um, we want in terms of physical activity is there for me no one to fall through the, the gaps or the cracks of the spaces between the plans and then have a physical activity modality eliminated. So anything like that, Julie, that doesn't appear within the aquatic, please reach out directly to myself for this one. Um, and I'll make sure it's either picked up in the fitness one or it's picked up in the aquatic one. Uh, could we schedule a Queensland Health Police inspection prior to opening the studio gym? Uh, so feel confident open. Look, that, that would be just a discussion with your local council um, or local police station. With, with that one, you know, there's an option just to call Fitness Australia, um, as well as talk through maybe some of the policies, procedures you got in place, um, the things that you maybe don't feel so confident about. Um, our staff, like I said, are fully trained in this, in this program, plus they have industry experience. So it might just be some bouncing some ideas off, things like that. Okay, um, all right. We've got three minutes left. Um, so I might just take some of these questions offline with uh, Maddie and myself. We can respond to these uh, via social media. Um, if a PT is a contractor and not an employee, do they count as a person in the venue? If it's the roadmap, um, a person's a person, so you can only have a cap of 20. If it's you're using the COVID safe plan, the contractor is contracted um, potentially by the gym in order to provide a service or they're providing a service within that gym. So they would be excluded from that cap. They'd be looked at as a staff member in that category there. Okay, can we float between the Queensland road areas? Okay, just with that last one, this isn't necessarily FA policy. We created this in relation with the Queensland government. So this is a Queensland government document that I suppose Fitness Australia has just had some governance and development of just to, just to put that out there. Um, the, the answer and the initial feedback, which I'll also take this one on notice and go back, is the answer is is no. Um, because what we run the risk of there, now I'm just thinking from the, the health clinical perspective here, is we have a group of 20 with staff members that are dynamic moving through the facility and then we want to flip over to individual groups of 20, okay? Um, which then just promotes significant co-mingling for when we have different members coming at different times to do different things okay um, as well as, as it also puts your business at significant risk that if you are operating in the roadmap with a cap of 20 of you exceeding that cap of 20 which when that's the when that happens going back to a previous question um, that's where the sanctions are going to be somewhat higher if you say I'm not operating under the COVID safe plan, I'm operating in the roadmap, but I have 22, 23 people present in, in the venue. Okay. All right, guys, um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm gonna keep hold of these questions um, and Maddie and I will, will work on these um, and come back and we might just post this on social media in some of the uh, the Fitness Australia business groups and then respond to those questions in detail. But you have any questions at all, please uh, either reach out directly to Fitness Australia um, or, or myself, more than happy to take any of these questions. Okay, all right, thanks for your time guys.